Okay, uh, good afternoon, class, welcome back. So I decided just to start a fresh video to hit heat capacity because it's a big topic and it's right at the end of chapter three and, you know, previous video was long and, you know, you might get fatigued or not even get that far through the video. And I, I wanted this to be fresh. Okay, so heat capacity. Heat capacity is definitely... Um, Something that I'd like you to have a gut feeling for. I can't remember if we've already started to look at this, but if we haven't, well, well, if this sounds familiar, then then that's okay too. So if you take, if you sat there watching this, if you take an object in your left hand that's made out of metal, so it could be, you know, if you're sat on a, a, a metal chair or something, you could grab the leg of the chair, or if you have a metal lamp, grab the lamp. But something that's made out of metal. And with the other hand, so your right hand, grab something that's not made of metal. And hopefully you'll notice that the hand that's on the metal feels colder. So the metal object feels colder than the non-metal. This is because the metal has um, a, a basically a lower heat capacity than the non-metal. Um, so this is the correct interpretation of what you've probably heard in grade school. So in grade school, we're taught that metals are good conductors uh, and plastics are insulators. So moving into college, we rephrase that and say that metals have low heat capacity and metals have high heat capacity. Uh, Non-metals have high heat capacity. So heat capacity basically is your ability to store. So metals have a low heat capacity. They have a low ability to store heat. So they don't store your body heat. So your hand that's warmer than the object, you know, if you imagine room temperature is 25 degrees-ish, your body is 37 degrees, so your body temperature is higher than the atmosphere, than the environment around you. So heat will be radiating from your body to the metal, but the metal doesn't store it, so it constantly feels cool, and it will constantly siphon heat out of you. Whereas the non-metal object, the plastic object, quickly will start to absorb your body heat, and then as the object becomes body temperature, it will no longer siphon heat out of you. Um, this is, happens when we put clothes on in the morning, and the, suddenly you know it feels cold initially, but then it starts to warm up as the clothes approach your body temperature. Um, so, so that would be the gut feeling for heat capacity. Let's look at some heat capacities of substances. So you don't have to memorize any of these. Uh, anytime this is needed in a calculation, the table will be given to you. So we can see here we have common objects, so lead, Gold, silver, copper, iron, aluminum. These are all metals that you're probably familiar with. Um, and notice they're all less than one. So they have typically a specific heat less than one. The difference between heat capacity and specific heat, specific heat is just a unit gram, whereas heat capacity is for the whole sample. Um, so per unit gram, these objects have a specific heat lower than one. Compare that with water, for example. So ethanol or water particularly have very high values. Um, so typically greater than one for something that's not metal or a plastic. I'm not saying that water is plastic, but I'm making a distinction between a metal or a non-metal. Um, Non-metals tend to have very high values, greater than one. Metals are typically less than one. Um, notice this numerical value is the conversion between calorie and joules. So that's not a coincidence. That's actually where this comes from. So one calorie is 4.184 joules. That's exactly the specific heat of water. This basically an interpretation of this is that water stores a lot of energy before it changes temperature. This is why, you know, recent examples, Hurricane Harvey, 
um, Hurricane Irma, Hurricane Katrina. They, they've been such powerful weather systems because they're based on water. Weather on this planet is obviously based on water. Water can store a lot of energy without changing temperature. That's what specific heat means. Um, if you live by the beaches, it's typically cooler than if you live in the valleys. That's because water can store a lot of the sun's energy, uh, so people tend to want to live by the beach. Weather can be very powerful if it's water-based because water can store so much energy. There's an equation that you have to know, so you would be expected to know this equation. And the heat capacity that we've just been looking at here, uh, C, so that table with the previous slide had those tables. These values are specific heat values that would enter into this equation as C. So we know that the heat of an object depends on the mass of an object multiplied by the specific heat capacity of the object multiplied by the temperature change. So Q is MC delta T. This is an equation that you'll have to use in calculations on your Noyori exam. Q can either be measured in joules or calories. Hence, we need that conversion from one to the other. Um, so I'm hoping that there's an example of this equation. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, so I guess this is an equation. So if you're given 2.5 grams of a metal called gallium, um, and it raises in temperature from 25 degrees to 29.9. And if the specific heat of gallium is this value, less than one, uh, how much heat is needed? How much heat is absorbed? Okay, so um, we have our equation set up here. We know which equation to use. On the next slide, I think we're gonna do it. Okay, so how much heat Q? So Q equals the mass in grams, so 2.5 grams. The specific heat we were told was 0.372. Um, now that would be units of joule. It looks like they've accidentally dropped the joule here, but it should be joules here, not one, joules. I'm gonna write that in. It should be joules. per gram per degree Celsius. And then the temperature change, well, temperature change is always final minus initial. So the final temperature is 29.9, the initial is 25.0, so the change is 4.9. So when you multiply that through, you get 4.557 joules. Now, we have to let the output match the input. So here we're just multiplying or dividing. So when you multiply and divide, the fewer significant figures of your input dictates the, the significant figures of your output. So the least significant value here was mass with two significant figures. So we have to round our answer to two significant figures. Step one or two will tell you some rounding rules. Um, but basically, our calculator gives us this. We're not allowed to give the last two digits here. Um, so we draw an imaginary line between what we can and can't give. And we say, okay, this first digit I'm not allowed to give. If it's greater than or equal to five, I add one to the previous digit. So that five becomes a six. And then I just can't report these last two values. Okay, so we round it to two sig figs. So it's positive, um, 4.6 joules. Heat can also be negative. You know, if I were uh, cooling an object down, then the change would be negative, so I could absolutely have a negative heat. A negative heat doesn't really mean a negative energy. It just means a loss of energy. So here I can see Q is... Um, Q is positive. So if Q is positive, then this would be an endothermic change, right? 
if, if the gallium is absorbing heat, if heat is entering gallium, then entering is endothermic. Conversely, if this were the other way around, if heat were negative, heat would be exiting, so it would be exothermic. A um, couple of slides here now, just recap on um, chapter three. So I'll let you read through those at your leisure. A couple of nice summary chapters, some definitions. Um, so again, if there's any concerns, you know, try the skill builder problems. I've made the solutions to skill builder available. Also try some problems in the back of the textbook. Um, how many? Um, I would say at least 10 to 15. 10 would be a bare minimum. Um, but try questions that look like things from your reading. Try questions. I think the skill builder problems suggest some homework questions. Why so would do those? Okay. So I'm going to close this video now.